Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Brandon again. Quick video today that I want to talk about the Rogue Deadlift platform, which is a new piece of equipment I recently picked up. To be honest, I was really excited to get it because it's something I've always wanted, just never really pulled the trigger on. But excitement quickly went away when I got it together, built it, and noticed one of the biggest design flaws I've ever seen. And it's really a head scratcher why they haven't fixed it yet. And anyone I've talked to that have owned this platform has really echoed the same sentiments. So for this, for those of you that aren't aware, it's basically just a steel frame with some band pegs on it so you can do some banded work if you want. You would then build your own platform inside of it using plywood or stall mats or Rogue even sells a pack of ballistic tiles that you can use, which I'll talk about more in the full review. But that being said, one of the things you really need to do for this frame is, if you want to use the band pegs, secure it to the ground. Now, there's a couple of ways to do that. They include some stuff where you can bolt it to the ground, but I don't really like to do that. That's one of the reasons why I got the plate storage integrated into my rack behind me. Or for a little bit extra money, you can buy a stabilizer kit. And what that'll do is insert into the frame. And that way, when you build your platform on top of it and use the band attachments, when you're pulling up against the frame, you're also technically pushing down against the stabilizers. Thus, the frame will remain on the ground. So that's the option that I went for. However, once putting them in, what I noticed is the slats themselves are sticking up off the ground, making the platform base very uneasy. So when you decide to put that stall mat in or that plywood, you get a very uneven surface, which is exactly what you don't want for deadlifts. Now, I talked to a lot of people who have bought this and they gave me a couple different suggestions ranging from cardboard, ranging to carpet, ranging to just put a big piece of wood over everything. That way, technically, you're not gonna have that unevenness. But one of the problems I found with that is that when you're dropping weights on an elevated platform, you get a little bit of rebound effect and it just feels like shit. So you really wanna make sure that there's no gaps of air between the floor and the actual platform itself. So I went to Home Depot and made a very quick and easy fix. All I did was I bought a four by eight piece of plywood, in this case, one half inch thick, because again, the slats are a little bit less thick than that, but they're bowed just a little bit, so I wanted to make sure I covered all my bases. I then also measured inside of the platform itself to where the slats weren't, and I had the person at Home Depot, for me, cut three pieces that would fit exactly inside that. So let's take a look at exactly what I had done in terms of the woodwork. What I found was that the two end pieces each measured roughly 28 by 48 inches and the center piece measured 32 by 48 inches. You'll also notice the bolts inside the frame itself protrude slightly. So in order to make sure I gave myself some space, I had them take one half inch off each measurement. Otherwise, you're gonna have a very tight fit and might end to have to resort to jumping on the boards in order to get them to fit. Now, this left me with two pieces that were 27 and a half by 47 and a half inches and one center piece of 31 and a half by 47 and a half. Since plywood is sold in four by eight foot pieces or roughly 48 inches by 96 inches, it made the most sense to have them initially cut one half inch off the eight foot long side, leaving me with 47 and a half inches across. I then had them take cuts that would leave me with my desired other measurements. And the whole process at Home Depot from when I walked in to when I walked out with my board was probably about 10 minutes in total. Now, don't get me wrong. This is a very annoying step. You shouldn't have to buy something just to go out and immediately add a fix to it. I get that, and I don't know why Rogue hasn't fixed this yet. But on the bright side, it's, number one, a very easy fix, and number two, a very cheap fix. So for me, this piece of plywood cost $32, and true, you could get something that costs less. I would not recommend about cheaping out on the plywood, however, because typically cheaper plywood is also bowed and not flat. And again, you want as flat a surface possible here for these deadlifts. So this one was $32. The cutting at Home Depot or even Lowe's is always free or like 25 cents per cut, depending on how many you get. And it's really a no-brainer in my opinion because you just put them on the base of the platform and then build your regular platform on top of it and everything looks great and more importantly, feels great. And everything is just nice in the end, which is what we all want when we're doing our deadlifts. So at the end of the day, it's an annoying problem that Rogue definitely needs to fix. But for some 30 bucks, it's a quick, easy one that you can take care of at home too. Hopefully this video helps you if you're having that problem. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comment section below. In the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.